I love these things. They're super cheap and a ton of fun to race around with, but I really want a drone that can carry a camera, and unfortunately, these things don't quite have enough grunt for that. I love learning new things, and those of you that know me will know that I completely nerd out when I get interested in something, so I don't want to cop out and buy a ready-to-fly drone. Plus, I'm not one to shy away from a challenge, so I've decided together we're going to make one, and we're going to aim for keeping it as cheap as possible, while also making it perform as well as possible. I'll go over the exact hardware in the next video, but today we're going to be focusing on the frame. Decent carbon fiber quadcopter frames tend to be quite expensive. Luckily, I'm an experienced designer, so I plan on designing and 3D printing my own frame, but later when I came across the MHQ2 quadcopter frame on Thingiverse, I immediately fell in love with it. It had all of the features that I'd included in my own design, such as the ability to fold for easy transport and storage, and the different length arms for either running bigger props, uh, for, a more smooth, for a more smooth flying and a more stable quad, or running smaller props for a faster flying, more aerobatic quad, but with the added benefit of having been prototyped and tested thoroughly. So, I downloaded the meshes and all of the parts that I needed and opened the Cura, which is my slicer of choice. I decided to print in PLA, as it's a bit more dense, but it's more rigid than ABS, so it's less likely to snap when I inevitably plough into the ground or a tree or something. It's also biodegradable, as it's based on cornstarch, unlike ABS, which is oil-based, so I don't feel as bad when I start printing spaghetti. The Thingiverse page gives you the recommended print settings for the different parts. I used 0.2mm layer height and 0.8mm walls with 75% infill for the arms and 40% infill for the plates. With that, I exported the G-code and began printing. So here are the parts straight from the 3D printer. It took uh, around 11 hours in total to print all four of the arms and the four different plates. Uh, so it was faster than Amazon Prime and it only cost me about £2.60 in material. This is just one of the reasons that I love the idea of a 3D printed drone as instead of having to wait a few days for spare parts for if snap anything for it to be posted to me, it takes less than 45 minutes and costs 15 pence in material to print a new arm. I've still got a little cleanup to do though so that's what I'm gonna do now. Right, so now that I've got all the strings off and all of the surfaces nice and uh, nice and smooth, I'm going to go around and because of the shrinkage of the material, just make sure that all of the holes are uh, drilled out to three millimeters. So I'm going to go around. I'm going to drill out all of the holes that should be three millimeters out to three millimeters, so that the bolts will fit nicely, and I won't have to do any fiddling around with it when I come to assemble it. Right, so now that that's all done, we're going to dry assemble the frame just to make sure that everything fits as it should. And then later on, we're going to weigh the frame to see how it stacks up against a similar carbon fiber quadcopter frame.
this is where usually you'd get some of these, which are vibration dampening balls, and uh, they'd all go in these 7mm holes that are just on the drone. And uh, unfortunately, these measure 7mm inner diameter, so I've clearly been sent the wrong ones. The actual hole through the middle of them is 7mm, and uh, the, the mounting diameter for these ones appears to be around 9mm. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to wait and get some new ones of these, but uh, it shouldn't take too long to arrive, and we can get a rough idea if we just sort of add on the weight of... I'd say probably this, this quad takes, uh, takes uh, I believe it's six of these, I'll have to double check, um, but if we factor in the weight of maybe five of these, I think that will be around the right weight, and when I do get the new mounting balls, I'll rewire and update if anything's different. Right, so that is the frame completely assembled now. Um, with the exception of the rubber dampeners, everything should be done how it will be on the final product, obviously without any of the electrical components and everything. Um, that will come later. But for now, this should give us a pretty good representation of um, what the frame weighs. Now, I am expecting it to be considerably heavier than a carbon fiber quadcopter frame. Um, I, I know about this, and this isn't at all going to be like a competitive racing frame or or anything like that, it's it's not good for that. If you want that, you need to get a carbon fibre frame because weight does matter. But, for something like what I want, uh, a plastic frame is cheap and it's a fun experiment and I might well upgrade later on into a frame and uh, into a carbon fibre frame and retire this frame, but for now, this is what I want to experiment and I want to play about with and, uh, and this is what we're doing. So, I was right about the six, um, six of the 7mm vibration dampening balls and uh, we're going to grab five out because the seven millimeter ones should be a little bit smaller. It might even be four, but I'm going to play it safe and, and go with five. I, I think um, five should simulate the weight of uh, of six of the smaller dampeners. Um, but like I said, if anything is majorly wrong, if if the seven millimeters come and they are like three times the size or something and it triples the weight of the quad, I will update it. There will be an annotation on the screen somewhere. Um, but for now, we're just going to. Uh, just add these on um, extra. So I've got a set of scales here and I'm just gonna turn them on, make sure that they are zeroed, zero grams, cool, and stick that on and stick the five vibration dampening balls on as well. Right, so the entire thing weighs 178 grams, which is actually not that bad. I was expecting it to be a lot heavier. Uh, there is a similar sort of style 250 quadcopter, so the same size, um, racing carbon fiber frame on Banggood for around 30 pounds, and that actually weighs 122 grams, so we're only a little bit heavier than that. I'm actually quite surprised with that, so it'll be interesting to see how this thing flies. So that is it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it and I can't wait till the next episode when we're going to be going over all the electronics that are going into this and we're going to start soldering and start building this. And hopefully by the end of the next episode we'll have it flying. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you all in the next video. I can't get it to go where I want.